Hello music lovers, thanks so much for stopping by this channel and checking things out. I thought I'd share with you my interview with John Anderson from uh, 2010. It was an interview that I did uh, as part of a radio show and only a little piece of it aired. Most of this interview has never been heard by anybody, I've just been kind of sitting on it and I thought, uh, you know, it'd be kind of a fun, interesting listen. You know, there's nothing here that's groundbreaking, nothing that you haven't heard before probably. Um, and I just thought I'd pull it out. Now, this is an audio-only interview, all right? And um, it was in Philadelphia at the Theater of Living Arts. And um, just to put some perspective on when this was in terms of Yes, um, you know, John Anderson had uh, left Yes, or they had kicked him out, or however you want to put it, um, in 2000. Uh, I don't remember the year exactly, but in 2008 is when Benoit David kind of started to appear with Yes behind the scenes and everything. And, uh, and this interview took place in 2010. Benoit David was out in 2012. So this interview kind of takes place somewhere in the middle, roughly, of Benoit David's stay in Yes. And we do talk a little bit about that. Um, my biggest concern with John Anderson was his health, you know, because uh, the whole health scare was the reason why he had to stop performing and, you know, needed a good amount of time to get himself back up in shape again. And so these shows that he was doing were just like solo shows. He had yet to hook up with Rick Wakeman and had yet to work with Trevor Raven and everything. He was just kind of getting the solo thing going. So the first order of business was to find out how the hell he was doing. I'm feeling really good, probably around uh, around eight, nine, you know, sometimes ten. So it's, it just depends on the day, you know, how traveling and things like that can really affect your breathing, you know. But I don't do that many shows. I'll do two a week. That's enough for now. So I'm pretty happy. Now, uh, one thing that we talked about was the nature of the shows that he was doing, because just a few years ago, he had been doing shows with Yes, you know, performing these big epic pieces with a full band. And now he was doing these solo acoustic shows. And um, I kind of asked him, you know, what it was like kind of stripping these songs down to its essence. Yeah, well, the, the, the songs are exactly what I recorded on my cassette and then brought it to the band. And that's what I found, a cassette of my early renditions of uh, Starship Trooper, Owner of a Lonely Heart, with the, the lyric, because they asked me to write the lyric, so I learned the song, and, uh, and you and I, your move. Just the early versions, you know, and that's what I do on stage. So um, then I asked him about how it was that he got back into Yes in the early 80s, you know, when they were getting the 90125 lineup in the place. And, and I kind of asked him, you know, what he thought about those early demos of the album and, you know, what, uh, what his impressions were. I was working on some projects in South of France and uh, writing about Ch Chagall, the Marc Chagall, the composer. And uh, I was working with a French poet uh, on some sort of surreal music and uh, I was pretty happy down there and I came up for the weekend and Chris rang me up and said would you listen would I listen to the album they were working on and I listened to it in his car and it sounded really good but it, it just missed on some of the choruses and some of the, the lyrics weren't very solid yet and so he said would I like to get involved and I said well if I do it'll be yes you know because they were going to call it something else. I think they were going to call it, uh, I don't know. Some, uh, I forgot what it was. Cinema. Cinema, that was it, yeah. You know more than me. <laughs> and, and I just said, you know, give me a couple of days. I'll, 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 I'll go in the studio with Trevor and see how we work. So me, Trevor, and Trevor got together and I started singing and they just loved it. So I said, I'll stay for a couple of weeks, three weeks. I did all the vocals and then went back to south of France and that was it. Mm -hmm. So I, I really didn't have a big involvement in the arrangement of anything. I just sang on top of some damn good music, you know. Right. Well, I wrote all the lyrics for the verses and the bridge and he wrote the chorus. He, he, he really helped me with the, the verses, but I generally finished them off, you know, as to how I would sing them. But uh, we, I think we did the first verse together, and then he went for a drink or something, and I finished the second verse, the bridge, and that was it. Because the chorus was already a hit, you know, it was right. it was touted to be a hit anyway, and the the production was amazing. So um, I just went in and sang a lot of different versions of each song on the album over a period of three weeks, and we picked out all the good stuff, you know. It was a brilliant, brilliant production. 
I also wanted to talk to him about where he was, what he was doing when he first heard the news that Owner of a Lonely Heart had hit number one. Do you know, I, I was in Barbados, uh, para, uh, wind, windsurfing, and somebody waved at me and I got back in and said, the, the song's gone to number one. I said, oh, great. How's Trevor? Because he was in the hospital oh, at really? the time. Yeah, he'd had a, an accident in a swimming pool. This lady fell on him and he, uh, he sort of uh, got really hurt. And then within a month, we were on tour. You know, you, you become a, a sort of pop star for about 10 minutes and that's, that's fun. And uh, I'd seen uh, Spinal Tap at the first week of the tour, so that, that zoned me in on what we were doing. So next up, I asked John about Trevor Rabin. You know, I wanted to know if he had been in touch with him and, um, you know, what his thoughts were about possibly working with him now that he was on his own again. Right. Yeah, we were in touch last week. He's, he's in Seattle. He's doing an, a beautiful uh, movie, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, based on the original Mickey Mouse idea but it's a live version of it and he's doing the orchestration for it mm -hmm. so he's very excited and we've talked about doing some work in the future me and Rick are working together Trevor wants to do it Bill Bruford would love to but he's not sure about touring so you know I did ABWH about 20 years ago and right. it was a very good album big, big successful tour mm -hmm. and I thought well why not do it again if, if everybody wants to do it with, with Trevor because me and Trevor bonded over the last three years he really he was, you know, when I was sick, he was calling me up every other week and, how are you doing, John? You know, very concerned, you know. Wow. You find out who your friends are. All right, so next up, I finally addressed the elephant that was in the room. I wanted to know, you know, kind of in a nutshell, why he wasn't in Yes and what his plans were going forward. Yeah, well, they want to tour a lot. I don't, and so that's a problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, next year, maybe, you know, when we get in the Hall of Fame, we'll all get together and do a good show, and that'll be probably it. Uh, I like the idea of working with young guys, you know, I, I worked with uh, Paul Green School of Rock and I'm working with uh, the All Stars this uh, summer on an album together because I like working with young people who are very, very eager to work on, on, on new music and uh, working with the symphony is important because I'm doing a, a new piece of music called Children Yet to Come, it's a half hour four movement project and uh, hopefully I'll be working with another youth orchestra later this year with uh, San Antonio. And I think working with younger people, and you know, I've been working with a lot of people on the internet over the last five years, and I've been writing so much music, it's kind of frightening. Because there's a lot of people who want to make music, you know, there's a lot of creative people out there, and I'm sort of a vessel for that, I love that. So then we started talking a little bit about, you know, how he connected with fans. Like, I, I know that he was collaborating with um, these young guys on the internet to create this brand new music, but how was he connecting with the younger fans and, and was he comfortable using the internet? And we, we talked a little bit about that. Well, I've got my website. I do Facebook every week or every other week when I can find time. You know, I've got a few thousand people who like to keep in touch on what's happening with my world. And uh, like, I'm just starting up my new website, uh, I think next month when John gets it together. My webmaster's been very, I'll finish it next week. Yeah, okay, for a year or so now. But he'll get it finished. Mm -hmm. And it's, it'll come out and it'll be a whole new website and, and a lot of ideas that I've been thinking of over the last couple of years that I want to get out there. Because there's a lot of young people out there who love Yes and are discovering Yes at the age of 12, 14, 16 years old, you know, and email me out through my, uh, you know, from Facebook saying, you know, I just got into Yes, I love it. What else have you done, you know? And then they find out what else is around and they, they just get really into it. So then we started talking about the progressive rock bands of his time, you know, like Crimson and Genesis. I asked him what he thought about those bands um, and, and how they influenced him. You know, we were always in touch on different levels. Uh, my Vishnu Orchestra really kind of freaked me out. King Crimson freaked me out. And, uh, you know, you watch, uh, you know, Zeppelin take the world by storm, you know, and I, I knew Robert when he was in another band. In the, in the 60s called Listen. So we would bump into each other and remember the old days, you know. And, you know, you just watch what's going on. But, you know, Yes was a very uh, important part of my life for many years, and it, that's all I thought about, Yes music, because it's a specialized thing, you know, it's a very... Until you know what it is, you don't know what it is. You know, you think, oh, yes, they're this 
pompous, noisy, loud, and they play long music, which is a load of rubbish, because they've read all those critics, you know. They don't know what it really truly is, and it's really good stuff, you know. So then we started talking about topographic oceans, because I know that was a very polarizing album in the Yes catalog. I mean, it was an album that uh, was two, it was two albums and a song on each side. So it was uh, fairly epic, and uh, we talked about what effect that that had, and also how that kind of music has gone on to uh, be very influential and uh, appreciated by uh, a number of fans, including his own wife, Janie. After six months, I, was, I didn't want to listen to it ever again. Rick left the band, it kind of broke my heart. And I just wondered if I, I'd made a big mistake. But then 20 years later, we're doing it with an orchestra. I'm saying, this is damn good music, and my wife loves it. She loves revealing more than anything Yes has ever done. And I say, God bless Janie for saying that, because I didn't want her to come to a rehearsal when we were rehearsing it. I was so scared she would say, what the hell is that? You know, now she adores that piece of music and Ritual and Awaken. She loves the big stuff. So at this point, I decided to ask him what he thought about bands that go on without their lead singer, you know, kind of like Journey. I saw Journey yeah, with, without the, the Perry, and they, and they were good. And you you, you got you to listen to the songs. You don't really go to see if the guy's still alive. Well, it's, like not, it's never the same, because, you know, I, I saw this uh, Michael Jackson impersonator a couple of weeks ago, and the, the, the band was great, the kids were screaming, and the guy wasn't, wasn't Michael Jackson. Right. It, it kind of moved like him. It, it was a little bit small and fat for Michael Jackson. But it sounded okay. No, but, you know, imitation right. is the sincerest form of flattery. So Benoit, you know, I love the guy. Good luck to him, you know. So, yeah, as we were getting close to the end of the interview here, I uh, decided to ask John, since he brought up Michael Jackson, if he was a big fan of his. I love Michael. So were you following him during oh, the Oh, God, yeah. Early and you saw it, yeah, you saw his uh, movie? Forget about it. He was so on the ball. Kind of freaked me out that he was so good. Because yeah. nobody, nobody could touch what he was doing on that. This is it. You see it? Yes. Nobody could touch that. Nobody in the world. You can have your Escher, Asher, Usher. Usher, yeah. Holy, nobody could get near what he was doing. God bless him. He's Fine. gone through hell, that guy. You know, he's a happy guy now. Leave him alone. God bless him. Every time you hear his music, you say, yes, Michael. I gotta go. I'd be here all day, I think. So, yeah, there you have it. Uh, the interview with John Anderson, uh, a kind of... Uh, Got the feeling, too, that we could have just kept on going. As he mentioned towards the end, I thought I would include that little bit where he said we could do this all, all day. You know, I thought that was kind of funny. Um, he's such a nice guy. You know, he doesn't have anything bad to say about anybody, despite all the shit that he's been put through. Uh, he's got nothing bad to say, in spite of the fact that, you know, certain people didn't give him a call to see how he was doing after his, you know, pretty serious health scares. Um, John always has a very peaceful, positive energy and attitude, and it was really, really cool to, uh, you know, hang out with him. And it was, uh, it was just also good to see that he's, he's very forward thinking, you know, he, he talked about how he likes to work with young people who are very creative and want to do something fresh. And, and, um, you know, John is, um, he loves to create, he loves to work, you know, whether you like it or not, you know, um, I, I tend to like John Anderson more when he's collaborating with others, you know, um, and he had talked about the um, possibility of working with Trevor Rabin, uh, which is happening now with the uh, ARW version of Yes, they're going to be going on tour again a little bit later on this year. I've seen them a couple of times. Uh, great 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 band there if you haven't uh, seen them yet try to go check out the ARW version of yes that's going to be hitting the road soon so um something else I remember from that time uh for some reason John's sound guy could not record the show and so John asked me if I had an extra disc I, I was using um, a mini disc to record the uh, interview and so he, he asked me if I had an extra one that we could use to record the actual show so I remember plugging my mini disc into the soundboard uh, and then you know giving the show over to them at the end of it uh, I will tell you though as a um, as a bootleg collector for the past 25 years or, or so there was a, just a little bit of a little bit of something in the back of my head that was like, hmm, I wonder if they'll forget to ask for the mini disc. You know, wouldn't that be a shame? Um, <laughs> you know, I had thought about, you know what, if they forget to ask me for it, 
and I happen to leave without it, you know, I could always go home and, you know, make a copy of it and mail it back to them and say, hey, here's, here's, the, here's the disc, you know. That would have been the worst case. But no, I, I handed it over to him. And, uh, and so he has an archival copy of it. And, uh, and I've got a really good memory that uh, will last me a lifetime. It's really, really cool, you know, when you get to sit down and talk to your heroes. So um, anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. Hope that you enjoyed it. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like it and, uh, and subscribe too. I have another interview I did with Steve Howe that I gotta see if I can dig that up. That, that would be cool. Um, and so I'll see what I can do on that. In the meantime, have yourself a good one and I will talk to you later.